someone that everybody knows in this community. He is the mayor of Thousand Oaks, Rob McCoy. Thanks a lot for joining us. We appreciate you. So you knew some of the victims that were killed that night. Absolutely. Um, two of the victims were members of my congregation. I'm also a pastor of a church in town. Mm -hmm. Not, I'm, I'm the mayor, but I'm also a pastor of a church called Calvary Chapel. And Dan Manrique took care of our special needs kids. And uh, Blake Dingman, his family still attends, his grandparents, his parents, him. Yeah. Where were you when you first learned of it? I was at home, uh, got a knock on the sliding glass doors. My daughter, it was a little bit after midnight. She said, Dad, it, something's happening at the borderline. There's been a shooting. So I checked my phone, ran down to the command center, which is a stone's throw from here. And the council met and, uh, and that began the awful night. Um, we, we were there till about two in the morning and families were trying to get in touch with their loved ones. But the families that remained at the command center were ones that couldn't get access to find out about their children mm -hmm. with the 800 number we had. Which had to be tough for them. It was tough and we saw them getting cold so we set up a location for them at the Alex Fiore Teen Center so they could go and await uh, because calling the hospitals, the local hospitals, they had no news of their children. So as we disbanded, I turned around and went to the Alex Fiore Teen Center and stayed with the families through the night. And, it was about this time that the sun was rising on a day they would never forget. Uh, they would yeah, find out. because you were actually the Ventura County Sheriff's Chaplain at the time. Well, not at the time. I had been at Ventura County Sheriff's Chaplain, and I'd gotten clearance to go and be with the families. Okay. So I was with most of the families when they were notified, mm. and um, it, it was an awful day. It was a 60-hour day. Um, and then we had a vigil that night, and when I came home after the vigil, we you were evacuated, evacuated after the fire. As a result fire, of the yeah. Woolsey fire. 16 hours. Yeah. So talk about that, just tragedy on top of tragedy. We've been seeing it all morning long. Sure. Uh, the, it didn't give us a time to mourn. That's why today's so significant for the community, because, you know, you have the shooting, we're all grieving, and then the fires hit, um, and everyone, we had evacuation centers, and then a year later, we, we wanted to make sure, and it was so important to us, that we had a memorial park prepared at the one year anniversary. As you know, with the, um, the, the shootings across the country uh, that have occurred, there are communities that still don't have a memorial. We wanted to make sure at the one year anniversary we were all set for that. So today's significant, because it's gonna give us a chance to mourn and heal. And a final question for you. Do you feel like it's put a black eye on this town here in this whole area? Our meteorologist, Dania Gersh, is from this area. and She talked about how it's such a, a close-knit community, but it's also peaceful and a fun place and, you know, one of the safest places uh, yeah. to live in the country. Yesterday, we de dedicated a portion of the freeway to Sergeant Helis, who was killed. Mm -hmm. And my comment to all the officers that were present is uh, we are the safest city in America. Yes, we had this tragedy. It can be visited on any city. But the reality is we're still safe because we're surrounded by men and women who would go in. The minute that Sergeant Helis went into that borderline, the killing stopped. Mm -hmm. So um, it is the best place in America to live, and it is the safest city. We're surrounded by good men and women. And I guess your advice for those who are still dealing with this process is a prayer. What, what do you suggest? We're, we're with the families, PTSD, with especially the survivors. They've gone through such ordeal. And then the families of the, of the victims, as a community, we've come alongside them, and I would just implore all who would listen to this broadcast, please pray for our city, continue to pray for the families. It's meant so much to us, and I'm, I'm grateful for all you guys do. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. We're grateful for you as well for sharing your stories. Two titles, mayor and pastor yeah. 